I want to talk to you about how to find the area of a three-dimensional surface. Now, what is a surface, first of all? A surface is parameterized here by some function we'll call r, where we're going to plug in a u and a v, and out we get an x, a y, and a z. The f, the g, and the h are giving me x, y, and z coordinates from the two parameters u and v. Over here, we have the uv space. And we have a rectangle in this UV space, which gets sent over into three-dimensional space, wrapped up and crinkled up into this shape by some equations that I've written out, some formulas. Um, the precise functions used there is not the most interesting aspect of this at the moment. I just want to think about, okay, if I had those functions, how would I analyze the area of the surface based upon that? All right, so let's start thinking about how to break this up into pieces. Now, first of all, notice the black lines that GeoGebra already draws on the surface. Where exactly are those black lines drawn? Well, GeoGebra is doing something. It's drawing black lines at fixed U values or fixed V values and uh, at some kind of equal steps of U and equal steps of V. Uh, and if we actually think about how it cuts it up into these little shapes, they kind of look like little rectangular shapes there. And if we could estimate each area of those, then, then we could add up those rectangle areas and get the area. Except one thing, they're not rectangles. They've been kind of skewed out to be a little bit more like parallelograms because angles have not been preserved. The angles are no longer right angles. Uh, so we'll have to think a little bit more carefully about parallelogram areas. So let's go back here into the UV space here. And we'll watch two things happen, both in the UV space and the XYZ space. And we're going to look at some curves. First of all, if I draw this red curve here, it's being drawn at a, at a specifically chosen U value that we're going to call U0. It looks like U0 is the number 2 uh, according to how I've drawn this. So fixing a U but letting the V change uh, turns into a curve on my surface then. So that is specifically drawn with U being the number two. Let me hide the black lines that GeoGebra puts in there. We'll just focus on our own lines here. Um, as a matter of fact, let me hide the axes just to focus really on what I want to see here. So I have this red curve here, which is the result of fixing a U but letting V change. I also can have a curve where I fix a V at V0, we'll call it, which seems to be the number one here, but I let the U change. So the green curve is where U is changing. The red curve is where V is changing. Okay, Because those are curves, we can use parametric curve ideas to uh, get... Uh, tangent vectors to those curves. Um, but again, I wanted to think about cutting up this surface area into little pieces, so that requires me to take a little step forward in the u direction and in the v direction um, by an amount we'll call delta u and delta v respectively. And I'm going to cut up my uh, rec rectangle here into little rectangular pieces here. Let's zoom in on that piece. We have a rectangle here which corresponds to some kind of uh, parallelogram shape here. Now let's get a nice close-up view of that parallelogram shape. All right, so now of course it's not a perfect parallelogram because it's not flat. It's not flat and planar. Uh, but we're going to estimate it with a parallelogram. Uh, first of all, we are going to think that this parallelogram is being specifically uh, calculated at a location, u0, v0. Um, so this is the point, this white point is the point uh, corresponding to fixing the u at u0 and fixing the v at v0. And from this point, well, we can actually get some vectors pointing uh, in the green direction and in the u direction tangent to those curves, and those are going to be the vectors that we're going to use to define our parallelogram. So if we think very carefully about what the green curve is here, the green curve once again was the curve where we fixed a u, but we let the v change. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, the green curve is where we fixed a uh, v and we let the u change. Okay, so that would be this curve here. So if we um, think that the only thing changing along the green curve is the parameter u, it's really a curve um, parameterized by a single parameter u and its derivative with respect to u, that is a partial derivative, would actually be a vector tangent to the green curve there. So that white vector is tangent to the green curve and actually this white curve here is tangent to the red curve. Now those vectors are longer than they should be if I'm trying to represent uh, just a little step ahead by a delta u amount and a delta v amount. 
Well, because those vectors are more like velocity vectors, I have to convert them into displacement vectors by multiplying by the parameter changes. A delta u times the one vector will give me this purple vector, which actually does correspond to just the step ahead by a delta u. And the delta v times the other vector corresponds to a step ahead uh, by just the delta v amount. And so it's really not these two white vectors I want to use, but rather these two purple vectors, which will give me my quadrilateral. This is what the quadrilateral looks like. The surface area of that quadrilateral can be computed by a cross product of the two vectors shown here. So let's do some writing down to see if we can figure out how exactly to do that. Okay, so let's work out this area calculation. If you recall, we were looking uh, at our plot here, we were looking at one specific point here, r calculated at u0 comma v0. We had curves drawn along there, r, uh, where u0 was fixed, but we let the v change, and we had another curve, this green one, r, where we let the u change, but we fixed the v0. So because those were curves, we have tangent vectors, and the tangent vectors here are obtained by differentiation. So this tangent vector is r, the partial derivative of that with respect to v, uh, calculated r0 comma v0. We are worrying, we are concerned with them emanating out of that point in particular, so we're plugging in v0 into that. Similarly, this tangent vector here is uh, the partial derivative of r with respect to u with u0 comma v0 plugged into it also. They're very specific vectors. These vectors are the ones, these pinkish purplish vectors are the ones which are responsible for this area calculation. So we had to convert our white vectors into these pink vectors by multiplying by the correct step size. So we took our partial derivatives, r0, v0, uh, plugged into our partial derivative uh, at u, but then we have to multiply by uh, delta u here to get this pink vector. Similarly, this pink vector in that v direction is uh, r partial at v at u0 comma v0 with a delta v multiplied on it to get that length there. Okay, so this uh, purple uh, parallelogram area is obtained by taking the cross product of this and this because we know that cross products of vectors find the area of the uh, parallelogram that um, has those vectors as sides. Now, of course, we want the magnitude of that. That's how you find an area. So we're going to just uh, say that our little piece of area that we're trying to find here is the cross product of those two things. Now, as I write it down, I think I'll drop the u0, v0 from the notation just to make it a little bit easier to write. But remember, they're being calculated at a particular place. And that times delta v. Okay, except, of course, we need the magnitude of that. That is what we want. The magnitude of that vector is the area of my little purple parallelogram that was drawn uh, to that shape. So it's a pretty simple uh, idea once we've gotten down to that. To find the total area of our surface, then, uh, we should integrate, right? We should add up these little pieces. Of course, now, one thing I can do with this is I can... Uh, factor out from the cross product the delta u and the delta v. Uh, those are uh, scalar quantities that can be multi uh, factored out. So that's what goes into here. R u cross R v. Now you know that of course these this was short for R u with u zero comma v zero plugged into it. But when we plug this into here, that's R with, you know, we change that. Of course, it's a sole partial. We change that to a U and a V, right? And we don't write delta U, delta V. We write DU, DV. And similarly, this is evaluated at U, V. Lastly, what do we integrate over? Well, uh, in our surface that we had drawn before we were in we defined that surface by a rectangular domain in the uv space and so whatever the endpoints of that rectangle are for the u and for the v belongs on the integral sign here uh, so i think i have to use letters something like beginning u and ending u i don't want to call them u zero because i've already kind of chosen that to be this point here so i'll just say a and b and c and d and those represent the bounds for our rectangle, whatever that rectangle was, from A to B 
in the u direction and for our v direction we're going to range from c to d now of course you could get surfaces parameterized over regions that are not rectangles and so you would simply uh, do this integration uh, over whatever domain you have that defines your surface portion and that's pretty much it so to get surface you integrate you do a double integral over whatever domain you have in your uv space r u cross r v uh, d u d v and that's the answer now this quantity here we'll call that a surface area element and can be used for other sorts of integrals that we can see another time